I was drafted. It was scary. I didn't know anything about Vietnam. I went down to Cincinnati and took my uh, uh, test that they give you. I didn't realize that when they ask you, do you like to go camping and fishing, you're not supposed to say yes. <laughs> and the MP said, tomorrow morning at one o'clock, you're gonna be on the Flying Tiger to Vietnam. I uh, went to pilot training, went to fighter school, and, and 23 years old, I was in Vietnam flying airplanes. That's what we did every day, sometimes flying three times a day. During the bomb delivery, one of my wingman's bombs pre-detonated right below his airplane, and then I realized that I was on fire. Uh, after 30 years in the Air Force and looking back, um, I'm glad I did what I did, and I was uh, feel fortunate that I survived and came home to my wife and little girl. And voluntarily, I was assigned to the cavalry, and uh, that's how I got to be a Buffalo soldier. I'm calling my horse Peanut. <laughs> He's big as a house. Peanut and I got together and just became like brothers. Uh, you're responsible for him, and he is really responsible for you. They came first, <laughs> and you came second. They were named by Indians. When they were in a full charge, look like, like a herd of buffalo. We broke up into small teams, and our teams were to attach with army units. That way we could control their air support. We were in a compromise mission. We were uh, attacked. I was injured. I took an RPG about a foot behind me. I did my job and made sure that uh, I helped get my guys out. If you can be a Marine, you can pretty much be anything. Every serviceman to me is important. And because of what happened to me, we now have an amputee support group in Central Ohio, and we're touching a lot of lives. Could we do get the amputees back into the world of possibilities? And, uh, and we're, we're meeting that challenge. We're stepping up to the plate. We were actually based in Kuwait, so we were in every part of Iraq you could possibly imagine. I found a, a, an IED. I had the driver of my vehicle. I instructed him to move to the other side of the road, and it, when we drove by it, it was slow motion. I can still see it today. I, could, I knew immediately as soon as I saw it what it was, um, and luckily it didn't, it didn't go off. You know, I signed up and I went ahead and volunteered. You're in a jungle area. They'd always let the first aircraft in and out. They'd start shooting when the second one got there. And we were listening, they had 22 people that wouldn't survive the day if they didn't get them off the hill. So we basically cranked up eight gunships and two slicks and, and we went in and uh, we got shot up pretty bad. I enlisted on my own. My job was strictly radar and navigation and get the guys on the ground in terms of fighting was a glider pilot, a radar technician, and eight infantrymen. Oh, I was under fire every time, every time. It, it was a pleasure being part of it, but we were screaming eagles. Oh, the mortality rate with radar men was three drops and you were dead. And I made 10 drops and then they never got a scratch. I would do just as much as I possibly could again, accomplish my mission and stay alive. And if I didn't stay alive, that's okay too, it's between me and God.